This is the kid I bring on set every time I go out to work, whether it's doing audio for a documentary or feature film or something corporate. Even if I'm going to help my friends out on a short film, this is the stuff that I have in my kit. I hope that it'll help you plan your kit design. 30 foot extension cord, 25 foot heavy gauge extension cord for lights, power bar, a couple of IEC cables, spring clamps. This is a small 50 by 15 vinyl tarp. It packs up very small. It won't work well in a heavy rainstorm, but if there's light rain or wind, uh, this is a quick way to cover the equipment and keep you safe. Small wooden wedge, uh, comes in handy for a lot of things, from camera department to grip department, uh, and so on. The tape stringer, where I keep a little bit of gaff tape, marking tape, painter's tape, scotch tape. I can't tell you the number of times that having this came in handy. This is a little first AC kit that I keep in my main kit. A really good uh, professional blower, camera wipes, a fine tipped dry erase marker for doing focus marks, a couple of grease pencils, um, black and white, some chalk, and a chalk holder. This is great for outside if you're marking on pavement or something that you want to wipe away after. A lens pen, a couple more uh, dry erase markers, different colors for slate. And I just feel like having this is easy to keep around and it can really help out the camera department. This is just a pouch that goes around your waist and it uh, has Kim wipes in it. And I also keep some Pancro uh, lens cleaner. This is an amazing lens cleaner if you haven't used it before. It's a professional grade lens cleaner, no residue, no streaks, very handy. Just a basic slate. Different kinds of wind protection. This is a Rode wind sock. These are called Dead Kittens by Rode. I use these for my small diaphragm pencil condensers that I keep in my kit. I'll show you those in a minute. This is from the Rode shock mount system. And my Dead Cat stays inside, keeps it clean, keeps it protected. And this is my shotgun of choice. It's a Sennheiser MKH416. There's a video on my channel on how to make this Rode blimp system perform a lot better. Check that out. A clipboard with sound reports. So I always keep a pile of these. Having this and providing this with the audio that you deliver really makes you stand out from the rest because this becomes a guide for not only the audio, but it becomes a guide for the video as well because it gives the editor a chance to see the shots and what was happening. So this is just some sash cable, an extra carabiner. You never know when this stuff comes in handy. Different kinds of rope, different colors. Contact cleaner, WD-40. This is a cable tester. Uh, we can test XLR as well as TRS quarter inch. This is really handy to have to troubleshoot if you're having problems with cables. That's a quick way to diagnose what's going on. This is a road uh, brush for the dead cat. And you want to have the hairs on the dead cat uh, standing out. You don't want it to be flat. By having the hairs standing out, that's what allows the water, snow, and that sort of thing to rest outside from the blimp. So by keeping the dead cat very poofy, um, that's going to keep uh, the elements away better. This is a basic AC tester. Plug it in the wall and it tells you whether or not the outlet is grounded or if it's wired correctly. This is just a basic uh, 12 volt lighter plug to USB adapter. You never know when you need to charge your phone quickly in a car or somewhere where you don't have power. Lighter, electrical tape, and uh, I like to have a roll of white electrical tape because it's good for marking, writing things on, labeling. A couple of pens. I keep always a charging brick as well as an Android and iPhone uh, charging cable. USB 3 card reader, it reads uh, SD, uh, SDXC, CF, extra SD cards, a couple of 32 gig cards. I like to keep a couple of these SD cases for handing cards off to clients. Instead of just handing them a bare chip, I keep these uh, extra cases and it's just a little bit better than having them put the cards in their pocket. Spare parts for the Rode blimp, extra suspension wires, extra mic adapters for different size microphones, as well as the tool to tighten the screws on the blimp itself. As you can see, I also have the Sound Devices 633 mixer. That's my main mixer for this kit, sort of my documentary kit. With it at all times, I have two Sennheiser G3 wirelesses. Inside here, I also keep one of the female turnarounds for the G3s, so I can feed camera audio if I have to. I also keep a little slinky cable for the boom. Part of this kit stays wired in. And I also have some time code cables, and it's just a satchel bag. This also lives uh, in the kit. This is extra parts for the G3 wireless stuff. It's the hot shoe mounts for the transmitters uh, and receivers. In here is also the stock microphone capsules that comes with the Sennheisers, the ME30s, and the cables that go to 3.5 millimeter stereo. I keep a variety of clamps in the kit as well. And in addition to the spring clamps, these are butterfly clamps. These are used to hang on drop ceiling and you can hang lights or an attachment off of this. This is another clamp that I keep in the kit. It's a mic clamp designed to clamp onto stands or you can put this onto a C-stand or you can put this on the leg of a chair. It's just a, a handy way to hide a microphone. 
And the clip just goes on the end here, and away you go. I keep a couple of mic clips as well. This is just a standard clip for the 416 shotgun, and this is a regular microphone clip. Extra cable ties and Velcro. This is an AC adapter for the 633s. A couple of Sony batteries. Uh, these are the larger uh, style batteries. I also have two more that are uh, running the 633 mixer right now. And uh, I have them all labeled one, two, three, four, and it's kind of handy for when you're charging so you know which battery you had used last. These are extra adapters for the 633. These are the adapters in order to enable the channels four, five, and six. Uh, to be microphone inputs, as well as an additional uh, female return for the G3 wireless. So this allows me to record up to six channels, and I have two of these female returns for the Sennheiser wireless system. Timecode, very important to have uh, the ability to connect to any camera or any situation. These two are designed so that I can feed something like a Sony FS5 or FS7 without the adapter pack. I can run timecode into one of the audio channels. And this is just a multi-timecode cable that goes from my 633 into a variety of different devices like the RED or Sankin SB4 or SB2 sync boxes. And it also has a lead to receive time code into the 633 so I can test to see if the sync boxes are in fact in sync. This is a breakout cable for any audio mixer, not necessarily for the 633 uh, specifically, but you can use this on any of the sound devices mixers. Basically, it's just got two male and two female XLRs, and it has a headphone return. So I could be feeding left and right or two channels of audio into the camera, and then I can plug the cable into the headphone jack of the camera and then monitor that headphone feed back at my mixer so that I can listen to what the camera is recording. And when you do that, it also has a little female jack, so I can listen to what the camera's hearing and the camera operator can still use his headphones. It also comes with a quick release. They don't all come with this, but it's nice to have it so that you don't have to constantly be plugging it in and taking it out of the camera every time. You quick release, move the camera, plug back in and go. I also keep a couple of 25 foot uh, XLRs in the kit for running extra microphones or if I need to have a longer run with the boom. These are what's called star quad cable, which means they're better at rejecting noise and buzzing from lights and things like that. I keep an extra slinky cable, as I was talking about on the kit itself. These things are super handy if you're doing just solo boom and recorder, and it saves you from having to have a big coil of cable all the time, and it keeps you looking clean and professional. I really recommend these uh, cables. You can buy this cable on your own and make these. I made all of these cables that you see here. Uh, I have a video on how to solder your own cables if you want to do that. You can buy this cheap, good connectors, Switchcraft or Nutrick, and make your own cables. So I always keep a variety of pliers, channel lock, needle nose, and regular uh, grip pliers. They're easy to keep in the kit, and they make you a hero on certain days. 25 foot professional measuring tape with a nice thick uh, tape so that it doesn't break, so you can do focal lengths and things like that. A good Allen key set. I can't stress uh, how valuable having one of these is. And what's important about this kit, it goes down to very, very small Allen keys. And this is great for, um, for the camera department, tripod legs, camera rigging. Having this is so valuable to have in your kit. Screwdrivers. These are called quick pick screwdrivers. They're my favorite. They basically have all the bits in the end of the screwdriver, all the bits that you'd want to have. I have three sizes, medium, big, and uh, small. Great little precision uh, screwdriver. Inexpensive, very durable. Inside here, I also have a pile of precision screwdrivers as well. This is called a boom buddy. You put the boom pole in here, and then you put the, this onto a C-stand, and then you don't have to hold the boom for those hour and a half long interviews. At the end of the day, after an hour and a half, you're gonna be moving the boom around, trying to get comfortable, and that's gonna change the audio slightly. So by having this, it's not only the smart way to work, but it will, in the end, provide you with better audio. This is a matched pair of, of pencil condensers. I keep these in my kit with these little homemade clamps here. This is just a regular spring clamp with a bolt drilled in the bottom with a mic clip. And now I can clamp this on something. Having these in the kit ready to go may save the day. Another microphone, this is my Neumann KM84i. Uh, it has a wider polar pattern than the shotgun microphone, and I'll use this sometimes for intimate scenes where it's two people. So maybe it's two people lying in a bed, or if they're sitting close at a table, and the dialogue goes back and forth. I might switch from the shotgun to this microphone because it's a little more forgiving when it comes to the pickup pattern. It's just nice to have a variety of microphones in the kit, depending on the situation. Sennheiser G3 wireless systems. And in here I keep uh, the transmitter pack, Sankin Cost 11. It's a really great microphone. 
Um, it sounds amazing, it has a great frequency response, and it's built really tough. I also have the RM11, which is a little rubber mount that comes with the COS11. And in here, I also keep the clip for the microphone as well. So that way, in this little pencil case, when I travel to the actor, I have the transmitter, I have the microphone, I have my uh, mounting apparatus, and the clip, so I'm always ready to go, and this always stays together. Now let's talk lav kit. This is my um, go-to. I would bring this and this to the actor. So I have the transmitter and the microphone, and this is all my bits and pieces for attaching lavs to uh, talent. These are called bumblebees. They're basically little wind socks for the COS 11. They make them for most um, lav capsules, but these are designed for extreme wind, and uh, they're very powerful. They do a great job even in high winds. I also have a little smaller version of the RM11. I find this is great for female actors when attaching the microphone to the chest. It's a little bit narrower and it fits a lot better. And then I have a couple of these little vampire clips. The COS11 slides into this and then with these little pins here you can hook it on the inside of a lapel of a shirt or on the inside of a tie. You might want to put this uh, on the inside of a collar of a jacket. It's just a very quick way, uh, especially in run and gun documentary situations, to attach these microphones really fast without having to use tape and all that, all that sort of stuff. And it's also concealed, you don't have to use the little clamps. I'm going to be doing a video on lav uh, techniques later on, so watch out for that. Then we have my little tape kit. This is called SensiTac, two-way tape. It's used for wigs and hair pieces. I find this to be much superior to the top stick that people generally use, the little yellow and white package. This stuff is much more aggressive in terms of its uh, ability to stick, and it's a lot easier to work with, and it's nice that it comes on a roll and you can cut it to the size you want. Porous medical tape. I'll put this on the skin first and then the two-way tape. It's a little baggie of overcovers, also used to conceal the microphone, and a little bit of snot tape. And if you don't know what snot tape is, I suggest you check it out. It's great to have in, a, in your sound kit because you can use it to attach jewelry or zippers on jackets. Uh, you can use it to conceal the microphone if you have to, to stick it up into a, a tie. A little bit of snot tape goes a long way. I also keep some alcohol swabs for cleaning off the skin if the actor or the talents become sweaty. Hi, Darwin. <laughs> I also keep an extra roll of the 3M uh, porous tape, a pair of scissors, and I keep a couple of extra charged batteries for the wireless system in this bag. So sometimes if I go to talent and their batteries are low, I always have a couple batteries in here that I can use. And that's my lav kit. So this is what the SensiTac looks like. I keep a couple extra rolls in my kit, as well as another roll, an extra roll of the 3M tape. Mole skin, this is a one-sided, sticky, very thin fabric tape, and I use this also for um, concealing lavaliers. We'll talk about that more in another video. Bunion cushions, um, similar to the mole skin, but a little bit of a different design. I also use these for concealing laves. Extra alcohol swabs. Waist belts, uh, these are used to conceal the transmitter on talent. I have five of these, and one of the small ones here, this is used to go around the thigh if the talent's wearing a dress, if the talent is wearing a tight shirt, and you can see the lav pack, this goes around the ankle, and then it conceals it that way. These are very handy. Enough AA of batteries, rechargeables to power my wireless systems twice in a day. A box of nine volt batteries a box of regular AA batteries. I like to have some of these in my kit because oftentimes someone from the crew will come to ask to borrow batteries and it's likely that they're not gonna return them. So in those cases, I just give them a box of these and I don't have to worry about my rechargeables going missing. AAA batteries, watch batteries. I also keep a multi-tool in my kit and I always wear this on my belt. A good multi-tool can go a long way. It's pliers, it's cutters, it's a knife, it's a screwdriver. Um, and at a glance, uh, you have all the tools you need in any situation often to get the job done. Also can make you a hero. You can't always run back to your kit to grab tools, so having this is uh, handy. 500 gigabyte uh, shuttle drive, and I use this to transfer files back and forth from clients. Basic tablet, it's good to pull up uh, information, or what I generally use this for is a uh, hotspot for wireless. So if the director or whomever needs, I can hotspot them with this, and I just keep this in my kit for that reason. Velcro, different kinds of Velcro, white and black, and two different grays. This is a lot more aggressive than this one. You never know when you need Velcro for attaching transmitters to camera gear or sync boxes and anything else. AA charger, this is a good quality charger. It's made by a company called PowerX. It has what's called soft charging, which means instead of taking one hour, it takes two hours to charge the battery. A slower charge is always better for the battery. The battery's charge will last longer and the battery itself will last longer. 
charger for the Sony batteries. I find these things to be a little bit flimsy, so what I've done is put a lot of layers of gaff tape all around this charger, and it kind of acts like armor, and um, I'm hoping that it's gonna make it last a little bit longer. Also, these plates tend to slide off quite easily, and that's what inspired me to do that. You can interchange these plates, and if you have one of these chargers, all I've done is put tape around the edges so that these pieces no longer come out, and it's made this a lot, uh, a lot better for me. Just a regular sound blanket. Uh, these are fairly inexpensive, but great to have on set. Oftentimes, I'll put these down on the floor, if it's a hardwood floor or a ceramic floor, and it really tightens up the sound. I can use this to block windows. I can use this to drape over um, a piece of electronics or a fridge or something that's making noise that we can't turn off. So having a sound blanket in your kit uh, is invaluable. Boom pole. And the last piece is the C-stand that's holding up this camera right now. So the C-stand, the boom pole, the sound blanket stay outside of my kit and everything else is inside. This kit is made by Stanley, comes with wheels and a handle. I've actually had this on an airplane. It locks up on the sides here, which keeps it from opening. I find it invaluable. It acts as a table on set. It holds all my things, it keeps it organized. These go for about $100. I highly recommend it. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you some ideas for things to put in your kit. If you think I'm missing anything, please message down in the comments and let me know what you think. Tell me what you have in your kit. Recommend something for my kit. And otherwise, I hope you have a great shoot.